Well, hello and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of the New Construction Marketing Podcast. I am your host, Anya Christianthan, and I am beyond excited to introduce my guest for today, Maddie Kowalik. Maddie is the salesperson of the year for 2020, and she is with Toll Brothers over at um, Ocean Hills in, is that in California? in California. So Maddie, welcome to the show. I'm so happy that you're joining us today. I'm thrilled to have you here. You know, I always tell my listeners, it's great to learn from the experts. And I feel like I do have a lot of experts on the show, but I do want to bring more of your own peers to the show to show you what they're doing. Obviously, Maddie's doing something right because guess what? She's not just the one-time winner of the National Salesperson of the Year Award, but she won it twice. So in 2017 and again in 2020. So I got to get to all the secrets, what you're doing and how you got here. So before we do that, Maddie, if you don't mind int um, introducing yourself, giving us a little bit of a background story of, you know, who you are, um, was it your dream from get-go to be, you know, the new home salesperson? And how did you end up in this wonderful industry? Fantastic. First of all, thank you so much for having me on your show. I'm so excited to be here. And congratulations to you for your national award for the one to watch. Thank um, you. you have been highly recommended um, by so many people for me to be on your show. So I'm so excited that you invited me to be here. So thank you. A little, a little bit about me. Um, I got my license when I was 20, and my dream was to build and design high rises. So I was going to be the female Donald Trump. That was the goal. And uh, I got into commercial real estate here in Newport Beach, California, and I was fortunate to work with four of the top uh, brokers in the area here at Remax. And um, that was probably the best training I could have gotten as a young person uh, in real estate. Well, the market started to go downhill, and one of the brokers in the office said, why don't you go into new home sales? Because things are a little tough in the commercial world. And being young and having a little bit of an ego, I said, well, you know, I don't sell homes. I, I'm in commercial real estate now. And he said, but if you want to keep making money, you've got to make a shift and adjust with the marketplace. So he suggested that I go to real estate temps and, uh, and try it out. And so I did, and, and the best part was when I interviewed with Real Estate Temps, the, the wonderful, beautiful um, previous owner had mentioned to me um, that she didn't feel I had experience and that she wasn't going to hire me as a temp. And I said, well, what do you mean experience? I may not have uh, grabbed a hammer and, uh, and some nails and you know put a two-by-four up, but I know how to work with potential buyers. I know how to collect a deposit check from them and I know how to process their paperwork. So I, I can do this. She giggled and she said, okay, let's give you a try. So I went to my first community and I was offered a job and I didn't actually take that job. I was, um, I interviewed with a different company, um, the Santa Margarita company with uh, the Moiso family. And so I chose to take that position in Rancho Santa Margarita and that was my very first new home community. And uh, I absolutely fell in love with the industry. And I fell in love because the Sales and Marketing Council, the National Association of Home Builders, the Building Association, they all, I felt, completely embraced me. I know it's not all about me, but that's how I felt. They had so many courses, so many classes to offer. And uh, I had a wonderful mentor that um, suggested that I take those courses. And I did, and it's, it's what's shaped me. Um, Mike Hickson had the Certified Sales Professional course, um, and I, I dove into that. Um, I was able to meet Susan Highland and, and take her classes um, when she owned Highland Bay. She now owns uh, Highland and & Associates. And so taking those classes, and I took all the MERM classes, and, you know, do what you can, be a student, continue learning, and uh, that's what I did. You know, and so that's what's had me really grow in our industry. Love that. So, okay, that's what I always, always preach. And, and I think that's uh, definitely something that made me, um, you know, uh, successful in new home sales is that, yeah, I wasn't afraid to invest in myself. I feel like so many new home sales people have this mentality of like employee that 
like, well, if my builder is not providing that, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to spend the money. I'm not going to invest the money, which is crazy because like how, you know, if you don't invest money in yourself, like how can you expect somebody else to invest money in you? So obviously it paid off for you in a big, big way. So congratulations on your awards. I mean, not once, but twice. This is obviously not a fluke. So obviously you're doing something to position yourself as the absolute best in our industry, in the whole nation. I mean, that is such a huge honor. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about uh, this award, what it means to you, and um, what are some of the accomplishments um, for both 2017 and 2020 that you feel um, have actually put you on the map to, to become the winner? Mm -hmm. Great questions. Thank you so much for asking them. So uh, I had stepped out of new home sales in 2000, and I thought that that chapter was behind me. And I was working, I was back at Remax and selling um, resale homes from about 2012 to the end of 2014 full time. Uh, prior to that, I thought I was going to maybe get on the LPGA and become a professional golfer, and I quickly learned that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> Although I love golf, but I, I gave it two years of you know playing four four days a week, and um, and I realized okay, enough of the semi retirement, and I and I decided to get into resale, and I absolutely loved it. And a phone call came in from um, Susan Highland, who was the national trainer uh, previously for Toll Brothers, and said that Toll Brothers was looking for uh, a very strong agent for their new community um, of uh, Hidden Canyon in Irvine. So I said, no, that, you know, new homes is behind me. I'm, I'm, that's, that's a lifetime away, and I'm not interested. Six months later, I received another phone call, and they said, just come out and meet us. And so I thought that was very kind of them, and, and I was encouraged by family members to go ahead and meet them. And uh, so I went on site and, and met uh, our who's now our regional president, Seth Ring, and I met uh, our division president, Brad Hare, and also one of our VPs, uh, Tim Hill. And these three gentlemen were so phenomenal that I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and, and get back into new home sales and give this community a try. They're, they really want me to represent them and, and uh, do a great job for them, and I think this is a challenge I wanna take on. So while um, I was there my first 30 days, they were uh, expecting me to learn the software and learn the processes and start to do the uh, dirt, dusty shoe walks and all that kind of good stuff, which I did, but I realized we didn't have DocuSign. We didn't have electronic signatures. And so I kind of raised my hand and said, hey guys, you know, so I'm getting ready to prepare to sign agreement of sales, but I see that there's no electronic signatures. And they said, yeah, we kind of put it on the back shelf over the last five years. And I'm thinking, this is rather interesting. And I said, would you mind if I pick it up and uh, try to implement DocuSign back into our company? And they said, well, aren't you still learning our software? And aren't you in the middle of dusty shoes? And I said, yeah, all that's covered. But I really need to be able to sign agreements electronically. So our regional president, who's now our West Coast uh, COO, said, well, gosh, if you think you can do it, go for it. And so I teamed up with our legal department in the midst of opening a brand new community hiring new staff, getting my own temps and getting my own team put together, also dove in on the DocuSign part of it because I knew systems were critical and I had to set myself up for success. And that was a huge part of it. So luckily, Toll Brothers was open to it and six months later, we rolled out uh, DocuSign nationally for the whole company. So that was part of what was on my application for 2017. Oh my gosh. Okay. So technology, obviously I feel like, and you coming from a um, resale market from Remax, um, that was probably one of the things that you noticed right away is like how far behind uh, home builders are with their tech, right? So that is- I hate, I hate to say that. <laughs> it, was just, it was just a little something that was missing. <laughs> Yeah. So I remember those nights when, you know how like at the last day of the month, you know, your sales manager decides to roll out some crazy incentive because your, you know, your whole division is short three sales and you're like, you know, bombarding everyone with phone calls, email, text messages, like you got to, you know, sign today. 
Well, right. I remember those nights before DocuSign when I would literally be in my model home, like light, dark outside, like ordering pizza while we're, I'm sitting there with my customers, literally going through all the paperwork trying to get like all the signatures so that it counts, you know, for that month, because, you know, God forbid you miss one little initial or something somewhere. And then like, remember coming home and it'd be like 11 o'clock at night and locking myself in, in, in my bathroom with like, you know, whatever I had to eat in a glass of wine so I could chug it down to like help me fall asleep (laughs) because you're still like wired up, you know, from from the whole day. So, and Oh my goodness. Yeah. So thank goodness for DocuSign. Um, I absolutely love, love that software. So if you guys are not using DocuSign yet, and especially if your company is open to trying new technology, that one I highly recommend. Um, so now with DocuSign, do you typically like to have a person still sitting in front of you going through the contract or do you send it off? Because I think like that is a big thing like a lot of sales managers want you to have the person in front of you to to go through it so talk to us about that process because i think that's a really important one sure um and that kind of leads into being a, a good listener and and really reading people and knowing your clientele that's in front of you if, if it's a younger uh generation they're like just send it to me i got this um if maybe they're uh, a more mature uh, buyer, then right away, I just, I suggest that they meet with me, not in a way that they're not going to understand how to do it themselves, but it's more of an invitation to be together, sit, sit together, answer questions. There's some bullet points I'd like to cover with you. So if you're here with me, I think that would you know, really be great. So I'm more um, introduced in the sense of just getting together, not that, hey, I don't think you can understand this. So why don't you meet me? It's all in the delivery. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Now, when you do it remotely with people, do you um, generally go through the contract a little bit, like saying, okay, you may get stuck here or may, you may get stuck there or pay attention to this, or do you just say, okay, if you have any questions, let me know what's the best practice with that? Okay, so first of all, I, I am going to assume that every sales associate, every sales assistant, not just the sales manager, reads every document inside and out. I can tell you there's been a handful of times with various builders when I have read the agreement of sale and I have found typos. So not just that maybe it was, uh, it's written great, however there's there's typos in it and it's not making sense. And you know, things like that are gonna happen but you're never gonna know unless you actually read it and redline it and give it back to the legal department. So since I'm very familiar with the documents and, and the various uh, versions that I've had with the different companies, it's easy for me to know what points to hit um, mm-hmm. or for a buyer. And like, what would I want to hear? I was purchasing a home. Love that. So you guys, if you're not familiar with your agreement of sale inside and out, I would absolutely be get familiar with it. And, um, you know, maybe even create a little cheat sheet. Um, we have something like that on uh, resale side where it's like uh, consumer's guide to sale agreement I think it's called mm-hmm. um, so maybe you can create something similar for your own um, agreement of sale and basically think about it if you were a consumer and say for whatever reason you couldn't be together um, that's something you could maybe send off as a, as an email to say hey wanted to make sure that you fully understand the terms of agreement and here are some major um you know points to uh, to cover and break it down you know break it down in a way that uh, you know a third grader would understand it right, right. and it's going to have a lot of legal jargon in it and some of that legal jargon can be scary for customers when they read it and so this is a way for you to really um break it down for them help them understand how it benefits not only the builder, but hopefully the consumer as well. So, okay. So I love no, that. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to just uh, say a couple things about that. Um, I, I've been completely blessed where I've had the best mentors uh, from day one. And with the coaching I have received early on when I first got in the, in the business, 
I would take an agreement of sale and I would highlight the areas and I would go page by page with them. So as they turn a page, I turn a page. And that's how I would make sure that I knew that I wasn't missing something that was important to cover, whether it was deadlines on design studios or, or frame, framing walks that uh, they have an opportunity to attend, that sort of a thing. So don't be shy about taking a full package highlighting the areas just so that you don't get flustered as a new salesperson and just follow along with them. They'll appreciate it. Kind of like when you're at a restaurant and the waiter actually takes note of what you're ordering. You appreciate that where I get nervous if they don't take notes and I say, well, please bring a side of this and a little bit of that. And of course they forget. I think, you know, have your notes ready. They'll just feel that you're prepared. Um, and also it's just, you know, repetition for you on site as you're getting to get familiar with all the documents. Mm -hmm. And I think it also builds a sense of familiarity and a sense of, um, you know, you're establishing that connection because buying a new home can be such a <laughs> overwhelming, scary experience that, um, you know, people are nervous. Mm -hmm. People are really nervous. So I think it helps when you go through the document together. Like I'll never forget. <laughs> I, I had somebody one time um, in the middle of signing an agreement of sale. They said, you know what? I, I left something in my car. I got I to go get it. <laughs> got in the car and <laughs> drove off. <laughs> <laughs> and oh no! Never to be heard of, and oh. uh, you know, again. So I'll never forget that. But it 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 really is. You know, think about um, even check um, signing. Like how many people mess that up, mm -hmm. right? When they write out that big check, it's mm -hmm. nerve wracking. So okay. whatever you can do to make that experience feel more relaxed, natural. And so I think it, it, it certainly is about your energy that you bring to the table when you're going through that document together, because it can be very intimidating. So think about a ways how you can not only speak their language and make it easy to understand so they feel like they can trust you in this process and they feel comfortable with you, uh, but also how can you make it uh, like a relaxing and enjoyable experience. Exactly. And if, and because they're nervous and because it is a scary time, it may seem like maybe they're barking at you or they're snapping at you. Please, if you're going to take anything away from this time that Anya and I have together is do not take it personally. Yes. They don't mean it towards you. This is just a very uh, scary time for them. And you're here just to be of service and to help them. So keep that smile on your face. Even if you have to tell yourself five times, it's not about me, it's not about me. They didn't mean it towards me. They didn't mean to snap at me. Just stay calm. Just stay positive. Give a smile. Take a breath. And, you know, you don't have to have a knee-jerk reaction to the client. Keep it a very pleasant, you know, uh, a time with them. Yes, absolutely. All right. So, Maddie, let's talk a little bit more about, um, you know, uh, again, your, your award and um, some of the uh, accomplishments for the year. So for 2020, um, you, were you in the Ocean Hills community the whole time or was there a different? Yes. Community? Can you tell us a little bit about um, the community itself? Uh, what kind of clients do you typically see? What kind of challenges um, you face? Uh, what kind of product you're selling, and if you can tell us a little bit about your sales numbers, if you don't mind sharing that. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So uh, Ocean Hills, we were uh, thrilled to be able to buy three parcels there. So we have three different communities by Toll Brothers there. However, I believe we're the fourth builder that had attempted to buy the land. And so the land had been sitting there for over 10 years, and uh, it just wasn't coming together for various builders. And there was already four other communities that had been built there by Taylor Morrison. And so the neighborhood just felt like um, they were being let down because these other parcels weren't being built on. Um, it was getting kind of a bad um, vibe around the area. And a, a lot of uh, neighbors in the area didn't even realize this parcel of land was there. So it's, it's, a, it's a little hidden away, but it's also right on top of a freeway, a, a major freeway that we have. So you would think people would, you know, in the surrounding neighborhoods know that it's there, but a lot of people didn't know about it. So when I found out um, I would be heading up um, 
Ocean Hills, which is 82 homes, and then we also have Harbor View, which is 55 homes, and we also have Tradeways, which is 22 homes. So um, when I found out that I was going to be going there, I was very excited about it because I know the area very well. If, if you're fortunate enough to, to work at a community that's by your home, fantastic, because you know the grocery stores, you know the shops, you know the roads and all that. That's fantastic. If you don't live close enough, which I haven't for the last few years um, at the other communities I worked at, go shopping, go to the grocery stores, go to the restaurants. Uh, don't wait to get near home to go to Trader Joe's. Go to the Trader Joe's that's by the community. Really get yourself involved in the community so that you understand how to um, explain what your community has to offer. So that, that's super important. So for me, it was great because I knew the value of uh, the land. I knew the value of the area, the community, the distance to the water, to the beach, to the malls. I knew all that, so I was able to express that you know, easily. And as I grew my own team uh, to work with me, because you know, when you first get to a new community, it's, it's kind of you and then maybe a tenth and until somebody, you know, until you get an assistant. So I was able to share with them and take them out and take them for a drive and show them around so that they know where the schools are. Um, so, what, so with that said, uh, there, was a, there was a little bit of a fear around how are we going to you know, create new excitement on, on a, a development that's been sitting there for over 10 years. And so what I did is I dove into the community by getting involved with the Chamber of Commerce, getting involved with the business owners. Um, any activity that the chamber had, I, you know, I was there, um, letting, letting all, I mean, these are business owners, they're in the area, right? Who, who better to have team up with you so that uh, you know, they've got clientele coming into their businesses that they can say, oh, so do you live in the area? No, we're planning on moving here. Oh, great, there's a new home community up the street by Toll Brothers. So you start just creating teamwork with, with the various, um, you know, business owners in the area. And that's what I did. We had a phenomenal ribbon cutting. So whatever you do, here's another tidbit for you. Whatever you do, go all out with it. Don't half do it. You know, don't, don't think, hey, I just did it. I checked it off my list. So yes, you can have a ribbon cutting, but if you don't get the word out, if you don't make it elegant, then you can't really uh, show it on marketing pieces, whether it's social media, um, actual print, so we had an amazing ribbon cutting, and not only did I invite the mayor of our city, but I also invited dignitaries from the two surrounding cities, because we, we sit right on the tri-cities of San Clemente, Dana Point, and San Juan. So they're all a hop, skip, and a jump. Why not invite everybody? And the more you're out there talking about your community, then the more you have other people sharing about it as well. So um, that, that has been a big big part of it. Um, on my application, you know, for 2020, I had uh, the reach out for um, business owners or you know, city dignitaries. Um, I actually, my colleague and I actually knocked on neighbors' doors for the four communities that were existing and letting them know, hey, good news, this land's going to be built on. It's not going to be empty any longer. You're going to have new neighbors and um, introduced ourselves. So go, go knock on doors. That's what we do in resale. Go knock on doors. Don't be shy. So if you have a brand new community, figure out who your neighbors are, where are they, and go introduce yourself. We so when did we do that? It was it was very strategic. We did it two nights before Thanksgiving, and we let them know, hey, here's information on us. Please have it at the dinner table. Share it with your family members that you maybe you want to have move you know, across state or uh, you know from another city to here. Let them know what we have to offer. And they're like, oh, that's great. And then the other time we did it was a day before Christmas Eve. So when maybe some salespeople might be checked out during those times, don't be. Get out there you, you know, and, and knock on those doors during the holidays because that's when families are getting together. And that's when everyone's in a good mood as well. So that was uh, my application as well, uh, reaching out to the, to the current uh, owners. So just you know, different avenues that you can, you can take to just be out in the neighborhood. Yes. Yeah, so I love, 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 love all this. Okay. So if you guys are struggling with traffic generating ideas, so Maddie just gave you a few different ones. So one shop where you sell, right? Go out to lunch. Or if you can go out to lunch, order takeout from local places, because guess what? Those people are going to get to know you. Um, dry, you know, if you're uh, dropping off your dry cleaning, 
use a local place. Uh, because guess what? When those business owners are seeing you, you naturally start a conversation, especially if you have your name tag while you're at right. it. Always. Right? Mm -hmm. like, it's so easy. And then next thing you know, you know, hey, you know, I've been dropping off my gross, my um, dry cleaning here right. so often. Like, would you mind if I left a flyer here? Yep. They're going to be much more likely to say yes. <clears throat> Love the idea of being involved with local chamber of commerce. Pretty much every single town place will have something. And again, yeah, what better way to get other people to know you than local business owners, right? Business owners know a lot of people, so they're going to be sharing your information. Door no, knocking. So, just, just jump in for just a second. Um, these local business owners live in the area. They already know your school. So if you're sitting there thinking maybe, well, I, my school district isn't very, you know, it's not one of the top rated schools or what have you. Well, then don't try and drag, you know, uh, traffic from an, from an area that has top schools because they're not going to want to be there. So focus on your own little pond, your own little pool. These are people that already love the schools. They already live here. Go after them. Love that. Love that. Uh, um, exactly. And then uh, door knocking. So a lot of people don't do that. Uh, I used to door knock before open houses even, you know, think about it. Like if you have an open yeah. house and a lot of people tend to have this idea that like, oh, you know, it's the neighbors so annoying. They're coming through, taking up my time. It's like, they're neighbors. <laughs> they already <They're> neighbors. <laughs> they live here. They know the area. You know, they already love it here. One, they may be interested in moving themselves. And if not, they sure have friends and family who I bet they would, you know, who better to sell the area and the location for you than the neighbors. Yes. So, and then it doesn't matter who's in your open house. At the end of the day, the more people are in the, in the open house, the more it creates this, um, you know, frantic feeling of like, oh my gosh, look at all these people here. Clearly, this is like the hottest place to be. So I say invite all the neighbors, invite as many people as you can. Yep. yep. As a matter of fact, uh, when I was at Remax, I would have a VIP open house for all the neighbors. Mm -hmm. So it was specifically just for them from, let's say, 10 to noon, then general public from noon to four. Yeah. So talk about really making sure the neighbors feel welcome as opposed to them feeling like they're sneaking in to take a look. No, you're welcome. Come on in. We've got, you know, food and drinks and let's, you know, let's chat. And you get listings out of it as well, <laughs> which happened a lot for me. Yeah, of course. And, uh, you know, if you're thinking like, oh, well, listings are not good to me. Um, think about, again, your realtor relationships, right? Maybe if that neighbor is like, oh, I'm thinking about moving. Well, maybe introduce them to some of your top realtors that you're working with. I mean, Absolutely. your realtors would love you for that. And mm -hmm. guess what? It's all about reciprocity, right? If you're sending business their way, they're going to be more than happy to bring customer to you as a thank you. Oh, absolutely. One, one, of our, um, one of the agents I worked with at my last transaction resale where I came to toll just sold a home for me Yep. at my new community because we, we've kept in touch. So that's a perfect example. Yeah, I love that. So let's talk a little bit about numbers for 2020. I guess it would have been 2019 numbers, but um, like how many sold you, uh, how many homes you sold, how many people do you see on average um, through your model home every week? Um, what do you do as far as follow up goes? So, you know, I'm a big follow up person. So I'm always curious to know what's working for um, different areas, different regions, and new ideas? So early on uh, in my career, I was fortunate to learn the benefits of follow-up. And, and one of my mentors mentioned to me, you're probably going to be the only one that they'll get a thank you card from, or an email from, or a phone call from, because 90% of the agents out there don't do it. So I took that to heart and did it. And at the time, I was with Kaufman and Broad, and uh, Jeff Shore was actually my national um, sales trainer at the, at the time. So uh, go back a little ways. But we ended up selling 55 homes in four months in uh, an area called Aliso Viejo. And there was 30 other communities there for sale. So we were number one. And Jeff and our, uh, our area sales manager arranged for a bus tour 
of all of the Kaufman and Broad presidents and managers to come out and see us and find out how did we do it? Well, it doesn't even make sense. And we had up on a wall our whole follow-up system. So really, it was pretty. It, it's pretty simple when you think about it. You know, they come in and you know you, you treat them like gold. You treat them like a, a wonderful family member that's come into your home. They leave feeling good. Then they get a follow-up letter from you. So a lot of our sales was because of that follow-up. And then I just took that and continued it. I, I never stopped it. Um, same, same here. You know, you, you, you've got to build one relationship with your agents. So the first thing I did when I was getting ready to leave Alta Vista, the uh, previous community I was at, I let all of my agents know I'm going to Ocean Hills. So I spent about 30 days specifically just on them. And that turned into one of my first, my very first uh, sale actually was one of my current agents because she felt like she was a VIP and I was meeting her on site without a sales office, without anything there, but meeting her and her client and just showing the lot to them. And they turned into the first, first buyer. So she felt good. The client felt good. Uh, then after that, it just became complete follow-up. Anybody that was on the interest list that, the, that our online sales counselors were working with, Everybody was getting a phone call and a follow-up and feeling like they were being heard and being um, serviced. Mm -hmm. You know, what, one of the things that I think is really important to know is, um, or at least for me, is, for, is important for me to be of service. I'm not saying to be a servant. I think there's a difference there. Because if you feel like you're a servant, then you become resentful and then maybe passive-aggressive and it comes out all over you and everyone can see it. But when you're of service, just to give for the sake of giving, just to serve for the sake of serving, it comes back to you because people can see it and feel it and they don't really know what the magic is, but they know they want to work with you. So if you can, as far as balance goes, just differentiate between service and servant, I think that that may be uh, very beneficial um, for you know those people out there because it's helped me a lot. Love this. Okay. So, so many little things to unpack here. Um, so first you say, okay, 90% of agents don't follow up. Like so many don't follow up. It's crazy. So if you follow up, that's already going to make you stand like apart from all these other people. And then, um, so how do you personally stay on top of it? Because it's easy to follow up once you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit less easier to follow up twice, three times. And we know that majority of, follow, of sales actually takes place after the fifth follow-up between mm -hmm. the fifth and the 12th is what the, the 80% 80, 80 of all conversions. So do you have uh, specific systems that you use to keep on top of that follow-up? Like how do you, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, balls in the air that you have to take care of and a lot of you know, emergencies and obviously you're building some really expensive homes for some very important clients and, you know, you want to service them first, but how do you not lose track of your prospects? Uh, again, I'm a, I'm a systems girl. So uh, yes, I'm a salesperson and I have, you know, uh, as far as the personality charts go, I'm yellow, part red, but, but definitely I'm, I'm analytical too. So I think when, when all that comes together, it's a really good combination. Uh, when I was preparing to leave Alta Vista to come to Ocean Hills, my numbers ended at 309 million for the community. Wow. And so we were, we were a huge ship that was moving very fast. So I had to make sure the team that we had put together at my previous community also didn't feel overwhelmed and that they had systems in place as well. So I created um, a form that I actually posted on the NAHB Facebook page. For anyone that wanted to use it and it kind of just became a little scorecard a little game and it, and you got a point for greeting you got a point for demonstrating the models you got a point for taking them out on site um, you got X amount of points for follow follow-up email you got X amount of points then for a follow-up phone call so all of that starts to add up and we we had had a low for a time of I think really no sales for, for several weeks and it was getting a little nerve wracking for everybody. Once we implemented that, all of a sudden we had 12 sales, um, I want to say in six weeks and which actually helped our team win a contest um, within our division. So, you know, it's not that they didn't know what to do, 
But once they had it on a little form and they were able to check it off, check it off, check it off, make their side notes on it, again, the magic just happens. Yes, isn't it amazing that activity breeds activity? Mm -hmm. Like it's so true, right? So follow up really works, and yeah, taking people out and showing them a home site. Like um, you know, I think it, when you're in that spot where you haven't had a sale in a couple of weeks, you almost get like ugh, replacing because you feel like, oh my gosh, like it's not going to happen. You know, you start to feel that way, and then when somebody comes in, you're almost not as motivated to get out of your seat just because mm -hmm. it's like at this point you're kind of like, Ugh. and so I think it's great that um, you implemented this game. Would you, would you be able to share that with us? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I'd love to share that. Send it to me. I'll link, um, I'll link that in the show notes so that um, we can always play that game and uh, get our, get our own sales numbers up. Love that. Absolutely. Idea. And, and sorry, go ahead. So one thing um, that Susan Highland had taught me back, when I first started in the industry was to, to be um, happy with the no's that you get. So if you're in a community that the clients are coming in, they're just saying no, 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 one after another, just put 20 paper clips in your pocket and for every no that you get, move it over. Because it's a numbers game. And just graciously thank them for their time and know that you're now one more closer to a yes and now another closer to a yes. That'll also help keep your energy up as well. Uh, if you get a chance, Clint did an interview um, after I won the 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, he caught me outside. So if you get a chance, take uh, you can Google Quint Maddie, and there's a great interview that talks about this, uh, you know, the 20 paper clips, and because it's because it's easy to feel uh, deflated and to feel like, oh gosh, I'm not getting good traffic, and then somebody really good comes in, and you're still you're still on your face, you know, and then they'll be able to read that. Yes. And you guys, I'll be sure to link that interview in the show notes as well. So you can check that out. Um, yeah. He always catches you like right as you <laughs> come out and like, I literally every time I watch my interview, I'm like, Oh my God, I can't believe I even held it together. I was literally physically shaking. Oh, it's like oh so my goodness. Amazing. No, you're fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. So I love that, that every single no gets you closer to a yes, which is true. So part of that is not being afraid to ask, right? If you don't ask for that sale, you're not going to get to the no, which, um, you know, you, it's better to get to the no than not no. Yep. Yep. Uh, you know, the, the saying goes, uh, if you, you know, play basketball and you don't take a shot, you have a hundred percent chance you're not going to make it in. But if you at least take the shot, you have a fifty percent chance. Yes, absolutely. Of it. Um, and uh, Maddie, sounds like you've also spent some time developing those relationships with your agents. So, um, do you have like a circle of agents that you try to get to know on a personal level, or what's your best practice with a relationship with, with brokers? Absolutely, uh, it's it's critical, and it comes back to teamwork. And uh, on LinkedIn, I wrote an article. Um, about where I use an octopus as a metaphor for teamwork. And so it, I, one day I was watching TV and they were showing you know, these, these wonderful clips about you know, life underwater. And they talked about an octopus you know, with its eight tentacles. It, each tentacle has a brain on it. And each tentacle can work independently, open a jar, grab a pencil, what have you. But it's not going to hit the other tentacle on top of the head because it's still one unit, right? So when I've, when I've trained my team members that have worked with me at various communities, I let them know you don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to have all the answers, and you don't either. We're all here to support each other. So don't feel silly. Go to the other person. We're one octopus here to help each other, not to make the other feel bad or insecure or pop the other one over the head, right? And so all of a sudden that takes a lot of pressure and weight off of one's back. So when I call the realtors or I go and meet with them, I let them know, you don't have to know everything about my community. You don't even have to know anything. All you got to know is it's gorgeous. Let me take you over there. Maddie and her team are going to explain everything. That takes a lot of pressure off of them because they're thinking, how am I going to go and be the expert at Ocean Hills or you know, the, the various communities? So once that's explained to them and they realize, okay, we're a team. We got you. you know, we'll, we'll take care of you. We'll explain everything, but we won't do it in, this, in a way that is going to demean you. It's going to be... Thank you so much for bringing them in. If it's okay with you, I'm just going to take a moment and explain to your client what we have here. And they're like, 
fantastic. Love it. So the realtors always feel really, really comfortable working with our team. Yes, I think that's super important that you set expectations with the realtors because remember for a lot of realtors, it could be their first experience with new construction and they have no idea. And the worst thing for a realtor is to feel like a dummy in front of their client. Okay. So I think you just have to approach it in a way that um, you know, compliments the realtor um, for saying, hey, thank you so much for bringing your client here. So whatever you can do to compliment them, to build a rapport with the realtor and say, hey, you know, um, I am obviously the expert. I know everything about this community here. So I'm going to take the lead in um, this conversation so that we save a lot of time in the process and can really figure out which floor plan, which um, home site works best for your client so we can get you in and out as quickly as possible. So I think it's all about how you position it and um, including realtor in that, but at the same time setting expectation with them that, hey, I'm going to be the lead here and that's okay. Yes. And, and also to add to what you're saying is don't, don't jump in while the other realtor is talking to their client. Let them have their time. And even if they repeat what you said, or uh, it might even be a little bit incorrect. Don't embarrass the realtor. Um, be, here's a tidbit for you guys. Be a great listener. Yes. Like people will say, well, gosh, Maddie, how, how do you and your team do so well? I really, really stress being a good listener. God's given us two ears and one mouth, and there's a reason for it. So when you're listening to someone, let them, let them finish what they're saying. Take a half a second and then respond. But I've noticed a lot of people will tend to just dive in and start giving an answer to a question that the client wasn't even going to ask or the realtor wasn't going to ask. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so definitely, you know, if, if you're one of those, you know, chatty Cathy's or you just want to hear yourself talk a lot, practice. It's a muscle. It's a muscle. And just practice every day on being a better listener. And don't be hard on yourself when you catch yourself not being one. Just acknowledge it and practice again. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it's so important. A lot of people think like an extrovert makes a great salesperson, but I think a lot of introverts make really good salespeople and it's because it's so important to take in and listen more than you talk. Um, because, you know, when you listen and you talk less, you can actually understand your client and their needs so then you can actually position appropriately instead of you just talking the whole time and dumping that information that may not be necessarily relevant to your clients. So, um, so you're obviously a girl after my own heart with the systems and analytics. Like I love that. So I think as much as sales is an art form and it takes, um, I love how you said treating every single person in front of you as gold and I think that's what I always try to do when the person is in front of you, you know, make them feel like they're the only one that matter, make them feel like they're the most important person and really, you know, dedicate yourself to them. Uh, but then afterwards, um, you know, make sure you don't drop the ball and implement like whatever systems work for you to really make sure that it gets done because it's so true. Most people are terrible at follow-up, they just don't do it. And so if you're going to do it, you're gonna be standing apart from so many already. So, and then Maddie, um, obviously you, um, you do a lot of um, activities, so activities breed activities. Um, what do you personally um, think makes a great salesperson? Are there any specific rituals that you have, daily practices? Um, to make sure that, you know, you get yourself in the right set of mind, um, you know, maybe exercise, meditation, um, any um, daily rituals that you have to help you uh, once stay motivated, not burn out and stay on top of it. Yes. Um, so I'm really enjoying working out and I've, I've had a couple posts on my Facebook page um, where, you know, I'm, I'm there right when they open, you know, one of the first, you know, members in there. And actually one morning I got there before they were even open and I was trying to open the door <laughs> to get in. But there's something to be said about um, getting to the gym and seeing the sun come up and just feeling like, wow, you know, I'm, I'm energized. I've got, I've got energy for this. 
Uh, it's much better to start your day early and then go to bed earlier than to start it late and go to bed late. If you're starting your day late, well, everyone, everyone else is going to stop, you know, at five or six, and you want to still keep going. But who are you going to call? Who are you going to contact? Everyone else is gone. Escrow's closed. The banks are closed. It doesn't even make sense. When I first started with Toll Brothers, um, I just to try and fit everything in, I, I would get there early. And one morning, our division president had a, a meeting uh, at my community that was supposed to be just for construction and outside VPs. And he walked in and saw me there. He goes, whoa, what are you doing here? Like, it's, it's, it, this is my own business. I look at it as my own little franchise. So if that means I go in early to set, set up shop and get systems set up and all of that. Later, I don't have to do it anymore. Once things are set up, you're good. You don't need to come in early every morning anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. But when you're first setting up your little business and your little franchise, you've got to make sure everything is properly uh, you know, set up. Yes. Love that. Love that. Well, Maddie, thank you so much for sharing um, so much great information. Um, I, I think clearly from all the things that you do in, um, in your business, um, sh you know, uh, indicates why you uh, are not the one, but the two time national salesperson of the year award winner. Um, it's been such a pleasure. I think you've shared so many great pieces of advice with us today that we can take and run with it from, you know, prospecting ideas to opening new community to how to work with realtors, um, even team wise, like how to function together as a team, um, that no wonder you're the salesperson of the year. So thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate it. And um, I hope to see you in Vegas next year. Maybe a uh, salesperson of the year for a third time. What do you think? I, 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 I doubted it this time. And I'm going to say I doubt it again. <laughs> but I'm just going to keep doing what I do. It's, it's, just, it's just what I do. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I will talk to you very soon. Bye. Bye.